Hi everyone, thank you for watching. My name is Ivan Blasquez. I'm an ACSM certified exercise physiologist and personal trainer. And what I'd like to uh, talk about in this video is resting heart rate. It is one of the initial resting measurement um, tests that you can utilize amongst your clients. And what I really like about it is it's very informative. There's a lot of information that one can gather from uh, resting heart rate. Now, the common resting heart rate for adults has typically been the range from 60 to 100, okay? That's kind of considered to be normal. But within that range, there are certain stratifications. So um, a resting heart rate, typically I believe the average is 72 to 76 for men and women. Um, so that's roughly an average resting heart rate. But um, typically anything that's um, in the 60s is uh, above average and 60 and below is, um, is quite excellent. Um, in rare, in rare instances, it can be diagnostic of a potential um, um, heart um, variation in terms of rhythm and so forth. So, uh, but typically a doctor can rule that out or not. But for the most part, in most individuals, having a resting heart rate that's low is actually uh, a uh, prognostic indicator of improved um, heart function and health and has been actually associated with reduced risk of um, health problems and heart disease and, 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 um, and those kinds of things. So a heart rate, resting heart rate under 60 is, is classically defined as bradycardia, which means a, a low resting heart rate. And heart rate is typically defined as, um, as um, stroke volume times uh, beats per minute. So that's what gives, that's what gives the, um, the cardiac output. So Beats per minute, there's an inverse relationship between stroke volume and beats per minute. So the greater the stroke of blood per, per beat, the less beats it takes to circulate the blood in the body, okay? So the fitter one becomes, the resting heart rate goes down. That's mainly because their stroke volume's improved and other, on other aspects are improved. So, um, and then on the flip side, a resting heart rate that's greater than, I believe, I believe it's 100, is classified as tachycardia, which is actually a very high resting pulse. Now, I like this test because one, I typically like to, um, I actually have norms that I'll be showing at the end of this video, but resting heart rates that are typically in the 60s or above average, below 60 is, is excellent. And anything that's in the 50s um, is really good. And even in the 40s, we're talking Tour de France or marathon runner status in terms of heart health and heart function and strength. So let me demonstrate how to do this. Okay, let me demonstrate how to check resting heart rate. So what you do is you typically do it on the uh, radio pulse. That's going to be on the thumb side. So you just take your two fingers. You never use your thumb because there's actually a pulse in the thumb, and that can kind of confuse it. So I take the two fingers, and sometimes if it's hard to find, it's going to be between the, the radius and the tendons right here in, in the wrist. So it's in, between, it's in that groove. All right. Now, if you're having difficulty finding it, have the person maybe um, ex extend the wrist. That kind of brings it more to the, to the surface. And the way I like to do this is, one, I like to have them sit for at least a minute or two to just kind of I tell them, just, t just sit here for a second. I want you to just breathe a little slower. Take some nice, slow, deep breaths, relaxing breaths. Maybe after about half a minute or a minute, you know, I'll just take their pulse like this. And by the way, when you take the pulse, I usually time it for 30 seconds minimum for resting, um, or you can go for a minute. I do 30 seconds and multiply by two. That's how it's the way I do it. It's just more practical, more, more time efficient. So I'll take my two fingers and I'll start the first pulse at zero. You don't want, a lot of people say one, two, you're missing zero to 0 0.9 seconds. That counts. So you start at zero. This is something that I was taught when I was uh, in, uh, in college, the professor told us that you start at zero. So let me just go ahead and do this right now and demonstrate it. And you, the person uh, cannot talk while you're taking a pulse. That can influence the heart rate or raise it a little bit. Um, and if you cannot find it, if someone has a low pulse pressure, you can take their brachial pulse. So it's kind of, it's kind of sits underneath the bicep. You might have to dig in there. But it's going to be stronger here, typically, because it's closer to the heart. The greater the distance is from the heart, the weaker the pulse will be, typically. So someone who may have lower blood pressure, they'll tell you, you can take their brachial pulse, okay? That said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do 30 seconds here. Starting now, zero, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-two. So that's sixty-four. Okay. For me, that's actually um, that's normal considering I'm talking the whole time. Um, but typically, my heart rate is anywhere is in the fifties. Uh, so anywhere from fifty-eight to fifty-five. Um, first thing in the morning, especially if I'm really if I wake up and I'm just. First thing I roll over and take it, and sometimes it gets down to be 50 even. Um, that's year round, and uh, when I'm training very intensively, um, the lowest it's ever been, I think it was 43, and that was like really remarkable. And so that's it, 30 seconds, take the pulse of a client, um, and here are the norms. So as you can see here, my heart rate was 64 at rest, and so that would put me above average. Okay, now as I mentioned, I took it before I took this video and it was 58, so I'm actually in the excellent category. And like I said, when I'm completely at ease and relaxed, first thing in the morning, it's down in the low 50s. So um, that's something that you want to bear in mind is that um, regard, like if they really want to know their true resting heart rate, you would get them to do it, tell them how to do it first thing in the morning, exactly how I explained it here. You take your two fingers, the radio, the, um, the radio pulse, and you count. Start to count at zero. It's really easy to do. Um, and so here are the norms. Another little bit of information. There's this thing. It's it's found in athletes. It's really cool. Is um, increased vagal tone. Okay. When a person inhales, you will feel a little bit of an increase in the heart rate, and then when they exhale. It slows down. You'll notice this in physically fit people, not just athletes. Um, it's actually a very, uh, very favorable adaptation, um, and um, it just shows that the the heart's becoming very efficient. And one of my uh, friends of mine, who's a uh, who graduated medical school, I remember he told me that the reason why this happens. This is fascinating. It was he was talking about when we breathe in, we're bringing in fresh oxygen. So it kind of like gets the heart going because the heart wants to circulate that fresh oxygen out. Then when you exhale, okay, it's the opposite. You're actually exhaling carbon dioxide and the heart relaxes. So it kind of, it kind of like, it slows down, the beat slows down. So that's a very fascinating thing that he, he had explained. Um, this is just extra information. You don't need to explain this, but if you, you know, you can certainly um, absorb it. Also, I'd like to add, check out the bottom of this video in the description. I'm going to go ahead and add some studies uh, associated with resting heart rate. Um, many of the studies are phenomenal. As I mentioned, having a low resting heart rate has been uh, typically associated with uh, better overall health. So uh, check out the um, studies down below. And thanks for watching.